which is an insane amount, a century. The battery pack is going to last a century. Now the Brits have dubbed the BYD Atto 3 as the electric car of the year. This is also one of the more affordable electric cars in the market at the moment. But does the tech check out? I'm Luke and today we're diving deeper into the inner workings of this car. Welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. So we need to start by introducing BYD. BYD stands for Build Your Dreams. They are a Chinese automaker who actually started as a battery manufacturer, but they've since evolved into quite a giant actually in the new energy vehicle. In fact, they had 1.8 million new energy vehicle sales just last year, which actually makes them the highest by volume automaker in terms of new energy vehicles. New energy being plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles. If we just look at their electric vehicle sales, they're ranked second from all the world, essentially. Now, this is their first vehicle being exported out of China, the BYD Atto 3. It is a compact SUV that runs on their own specific electric architecture known as the BYD e-platform version 3. This is an all electric architecture, which we'll see later on in the channel with their other vehicles as well. For a sneak peek at what's to come, make sure you check out my launch video when BYD launched here in Malta. I give a sneak peek of the cars to come from BYD. Those are also using the same architecture we have here. This architecture features 800 volt charging, which I must though say this car does not have. So this is a 400 volt architecture. They also have a, a battery pack, which is essentially a structural component to the vehicle. That's interesting, and we're gonna get into that a little later in the video. Heat pump comes as standard as well with this car, so there's a lot to talk about. And perhaps the most interesting thing I learned about BYD is that short of the tires and the glass, BYD make literally everything else in this vehicle. This is unheard of in the auto industry. Usually the, the switches and little subcomponents are subcontracted and bought from other suppliers, but not with the BYD. BYD are making literally everything short of the glass and tires themselves. Now let's talk a bit about that electric motor. We have a permanent magnet synchronous motor, as we're used to seeing on the channel. That's in the front of the vehicle for a front wheel drive car. Now, it's quite nippy for a car of this size, actually, because it's zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 7.3 seconds, because that motor is delivering 310 newton meters of torque and just over 200 brake horsepower. But perhaps beyond all the stats, what really interested me, because it's quite unique to BYD, is that they have a special and unique eight in one design for their motor. In fact, their motor is not just the electric motor, but it also integrates within the same housing, the motor, motor controller, inverter, reducer, onboard charger slash DC converter, high voltage distribution box, vehicle controller, and also the BMS, the battery management system. Usually these components are separate and sometimes come from different suppliers, but because BYD are making everything themselves, they're able to package all these different com components all to one. Despite this though, we do not get a frunk, something I am missing a bit in this vehicle, but it's very cool to see how they took all these separate components and brought them into one design. So let's talk a bit about the battery, the high voltage battery. I expect nothing less than greatness from a company that started off making batteries in the first place. So what do we have here? We have what is called a BYD blade design. This is a proprietary design by BYD, which they are using themselves in their cars, but they're also selling these batteries to other manufacturers, most notably Tesla, who are using the blade battery in their made in Germany Model Ys. I've covered that extensively in my review of the Model Y, which you may check out linked above. But what do we have here? We have a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack of which 60.5 kilowatts are actually usable. And most critically, this is LFP battery 
chemistry, lithium ion phosphate, different from the NCM, the nickel manganese cobalt, we're used to seeing in many of the electric vehicles we've seen so far on the channel. So what does this mean and what difference does it make to you as the consumer? Well, NCM is rated for 800 to 8,500 charge cycles, where a charge cycle is how many times you charge and discharge the battery. So those batteries can last 8,500 charge cycles, charging and discharging 8,500 times. This LFP battery design is rated between 3,000 and 10,000 charge cycles. BYD actually write 5,000 right in the middle um, on their own website. This is a huge amount of charge cycles. And it's hard to imagine because when you multiply the numbers in your head, you get some crazy amount of years. So if you take that 5,000 charge cycles, you multiply it um, by seven, because let's say you're charging this car once a week, right? Seven days. And here in Malta, with our level of kilometers, that's how much you're going to be charging the car if you're the average driver. You divide the answer by 365, right? <laughs> you end up with 95 years of usable life here in the Maltese use case, which is an insane amount, a century. The battery pack is going to last a century. So we're not going to be around to see that happen most probably, but the science all points to these numbers. The tests which have been done all point to these numbers. Now, BYD on the website do not claim 95 years. That is my calculation based on the reality here in Malta, which is quite a unique city-like driving field with very low amount of kilometers per year. They actually go to say that these batteries will last around 30 years in sort of a high highway use case scenario. But this is incredible and a huge step forward. Now, LFP originally wasn't used as a battery design because it is heavier and suffers from slower charging times. But these amount of cycle lives is just too appetizing to ignore. And this is why we're going to start seeing a wave of cars using the LFP battery design. As well, not ignoring the fact that cobalt and nickel have gone up in price significantly. Now also, just to show the confidence in the Blade LFP battery technology, the same battery I'm currently sitting on, right, can be used for grid storage. So that's when the batteries are used to power essentially as a backup power for the grid. When they're being used for that use case, BYD are offering warranties between 20 and 25 years on the batteries. They're not doing the same on the cars. They don't need to do the same on the cars because everyone else still has to catch up. So the warranty on the cars is still the standard eight years. However, they are offering here in Malta up to 200,000 kilometers. So usually the warranties are on, on, bat, on EV batteries, eight years or 160,000 kilometers, which is reached first. In the case of the BYD, it's eight years or 200,000 kilometers. So, and that's the warranty. Again, that is the warranty. That is the time in which they will completely change it for you if something were to go wrong. So it doesn't mean the battery is going to last eight years. That is the warranty period. Let's talk about charging because I know this can confuse a lot of people because there's a lot of numbers out there. So firstly, there are two charging technologies which come with this car here in Europe. You've got AC and DC. AC is what you're going to charge with at home and a lot of the public network as well. And that comes in a variety of powers which then equate to charging speed. DC is our more rapid option generally found on highway situations. Let's start with AC. So if you're charging at home on a three pin socket, which I do not recommend, it will take you 31 hours to charge this vehicle. That is the absolute worst case scenario, which again, I do not recommend you charge the cars in that way. Then if you use a proper type two wall box in your home setup, or on the public network, okay, and you're charging at 3.7 kilowatts, then it will take 19 hours to charge the car. That is on a single phase supply. You can also charge at 7.4 kilowatts, again, on the single phase supply, and that takes 10 hours. However, 
that situation, as I've mentioned before on the channel, is only realistic if you have just the car charging on that meter. If you have the car, the garage, and the rest of the house, charging at 7.4 is a bit risky because it leaves very little wiggle room to the rest of the appliances in the house. So the 3.7 kilowatts is a more realistic option when charging at home on single phase. However, this car, also the versions we're getting in Malta actually, come by standard with an 11 kilowatt three phase charger. That means if you charge on the public network, which is all three phase, or if you install or have three phase supply at home, then you can charge this car in six and a half hours. Um, it's very nice actually that the 11 kilowatt charger is included. That is usually an option with a lot of the other brands which can set you back an extra five, 600 euros. So this is something not to take lightly here. Now let's talk DC fast charging. So this is actually where the LFP battery design is at a bit of a disadvantage at the moment at least. So this car charges at a maximum rate of 89 kilowatts on DC, which is slower than a lot of the competition to be fair. However, because of the blade battery design by BYD, they're able to do something very different. So when we quote DC charging tank, we always quote the peak charging rate. So when you DC charge a car, it starts to charge at the maximum rate if it's under 20% charge, the car. So it will go up to the maximum, in this case, 89. And then as the, car become, as the car's battery starts to fill up, it starts to decrease the charging rate in steps. But with their BYD blade design, they're able to manipulate this, what we call the charging curve, right? In a way where they maintain the higher 89 um, kilowatt power for longer. Just to give you an, 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 a comparison, right? The Volvo C40, which you also saw on the channel, has a peak charging rate on DC of 135 kilowatts. That also has a similar sized battery. However, that car charges in just four to five minutes faster than this BYD battery, despite the charging being 89 kilo. So there's a huge discrepancy here, but you can really see the charge curve working. So definitely something to keep an eye when you're charging. Also, side note, our fastest chargers here in Malta at the moment, 50 kilowatts anyway. So we have to wait for the public network to catch up essentially before we can charge at the maximum rate this car can accept. So let's talk a bit about the regen or regeneration of this car. That's the vehicle's ability to recharge the battery as we are driving. So have you ever heard the term self-charging hybrids? That's just a marketing term to show you that the, the hybrids charge while they're driving. Well, fun fact, if you don't know, electric vehicles also do this on a daily and standard basis. They do it by regen. And the region can be controlled, right? We have two modes in this vehicle. We have our standard mode, which is always on, not noticeable at all. And then we have our high mode, again, honestly, barely noticeable in this vehicle. So I've gotten to try it as I got collected the vehicle this morning and I have driven it a bit before. I will go into a bit more detail in my driving video about this, but I have to be honest, the regen, even if it's in its highest setting here, is barely noticeable at all. I've been told that they can improve this through a software update. Perhaps they're going after people who are coming directly from the internal combustion vehicles who are not used to regen, but for someone like me, who's at this point driven probably like 20 different electric vehicles, this has to be the car with the least amount of regen. And regen is something I like and I've gotten used to because it means that I can drive the car practically with one pedal. So it is a bit weak in this vehicle. One cool thing though, however, is the fact that this car through an adapter does do vehicle to load. So you can use the car to power appliances up to 3.6 kilowatt output. Let me tell you, this is starting to come, we've already seen it on the channel from some brands and this BYD has it and I think we'll see more of this coming to, to other cars. Let me tell you why I like this. This is going to change the way we wire our homes, I believe. So in Malta, if you're Maltese you definitely know this, we had a week or two weeks of pretty bad power cuts this past summer. 
And as I stood there in the dark and in the hottest days of the year, I thought, well, light isn't a problem because you turn on a torch. The only thing you want to get going in that excruciating heat is the air conditioner. And I just said, let me tell you, with 3.6 kilo output, you could be running that air conditioner and more appliances in the home if you just have the wiring to do so. So I do envision a future where our homes have the capability to switch certain appliances onto essentially a power source coming from the garage, which will be actually the car. So the car, the electric car, is actually going to be a plus and a savior in a power cut situation and not the other way around where some people are commenting online, if I had an electric car, right, I couldn't go anywhere. This is not the case, okay? I mean, if you're flat battery, which you should never be, you should always leave 20%, which by the way, gets you from one side to the other side of the island like twice, right? Um, this is not an issue. So I do envision this technology picking up and changing not only the way we see cars, but the way we see our homes as well. Let's talk a bit about the range of the vehicle or the WLTP. So this car has a WLTP of 420 kilometers, which translates to 260 miles for our English viewers. But I will go a step further because in my driving video, I'm going to be driving this car a while. And by monitoring the efficiency of the car, I'll be able to give you a real world range estimate of what the car can do here in Malta. Now, Malta, the conditions are favorable for electric vehicles because of our climate, which is very close to the ideal temperature required for those batteries to run at their best. Our short distances and our low speeds mean that the cars achieve or usually exceed the WLTP rating. But I'll be seeing what this BYD Atto 3 does here in the real world in my driving video. When the Western world decided to make everything in China, that led to the Chinese economy growing significantly, which though had its negative impact, it created one of the biggest pollution problems we have ever seen. And the Chinese government decided to double down on its efforts for clean and renewable energies. BYD was one of the answers to that call. Half the world's EVs are currently sold in China. So BYD is probably the first of a wave of Chinese car brands which are coming to the West. And they've been working at the problem the longest. So there definitely will be things to learn from the Chinese. I'd like to thank BYD Malta as well as Gazan Zammit Motors for their help with today's review. Maverick for helping out with all the technical and of course you the viewer. If you enjoyed today's video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe definitely helps a lot to a growing YouTube channel like this one. But as always I hope me and the BYD have convinced you that the future is electric.